You guys remember the Jetsons? Well, not if you're below 45, but if you're above 45, this was our favourite cartoon back then. It was a cartoon about a family from the distant future that had all the technological advances, especially this robot nanny and maid that would follow them everywhere around. You, they could converse with this robot and the robot would you know, cook, do the dishes, scold the children, give advice. And guess what? That future is here. Now it seems that the next big race and the next big battleground for tech companies is in robotics. So Apple just announced that they are scrapping their plans to build an electric vehicle after working on it for a couple of years because they found that it's too, uh, too much competition in their space. But they are going into home robotics, which they believe is the next big thing. Tesla has also been working on their humanoid robot technology for quite a number of years and is now getting pretty advanced is their Optimus robot uh, program. And of course, Amazon is the biggest user of robots in the world. Amazon currently uses over 750,000 robots in their factories and it has replaced 100,000 humans so far. And 75% of packages delivered have been assisted by these robots. And very recently, about a week ago, NVIDIA unveiled their fully humanoid robots that are set to rival Tesla's Optimus robots. Well, I think we have some special guests. Do we? Hey guys. So I understand you guys are powered by Jetson. They're powered by Jetsons. Little Jetson robotics computers inside. They learn to walk in Isaac Sim. And of course, you also have this company making huge wave in robotics industry called Figure, which is backed by both Nvidia and Microsoft. Take a look at their robot called Figure One. Hey, Figure One, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? In 1980, Bill Gates said that one day there'll be a computer in every home. And everyone thought that he was crazy because, you know, computers were so expensive, you could only find them in laboratories, in, in companies. But today, not only do you have a computer in every home, you have got many computers in every home and you have a computer in your pocket called a smartphone. So what we think it's crazy that there'll be a robot in every home, very soon, there'll be many robots in our homes. Yes, scary, but exciting at the same time. I don't know if you realize this, but in November 2022, the world changed forever because that was called a ChatGPT moment. In November 2022, that was when ChatGPT was introduced to the world and it changed the entire world. I'm sure like me, you were astounded that this AI chatbot could not only answer almost any question you ask it, it could hold a conversation, it could create beautiful poetry, it could write a song, it could do your homework, it can create a presentation, it can write articles. And that was just the beginning of generative AI. And then you had all these other applications, you had Gemini Bart coming up, and then you have applications like Adobe Firefly, like Mid Journey, where now you could create uh, pictures from text and then you have got Sora that can create videos from text and again you have got hundreds and hundreds of all these AI applications and that my friend was the chat GPT moment and that was the moment when uh, we discovered that it would totally change the economy it would change our lifestyle it would change businesses make them more productive and any company that was able to apply generative AI was part of creating gener generative AI, uh, had huge gains in the stock market. Of course, you have got one of the biggest winners. By the way, this was the exact point, November 2022. That was the chat GPT moment that launched, uh, in fact, this bull market. You had you know, Nvidia up 400% since then, Meta up 351%, Palantir up 221%, Amazon, you know, ServiceNow, Microsoft, Google all up you know, over 100%. Of course, there are many, many others that, you know, I can't put them all on this chart, but that sparked an AI revolution. 
So far, we have only seen phase one. So what's phase two? Phase two is now where companies begin to build generative AI into robots, but not just any robots, humanoid robots. Now, currently, there are already millions of robots that are being used in factories to build automotives in the F&B industry. But all the robots currently are only programmed to do a very specific task, like uh, deep fry french fries or to paint a car. And it can only work in a very specific environment. But the big difference is that now, we are going to the humanoid robots that can do a wide range of tasks that whatever human can do, the robot can do in any environment. And that totally changes the game. So while the existing global industrial robots market is expected to grow at 10.7% compounded annual growth rate up to 2030, but the humanoid robotics market that again uses generative AI is projected to grow at a CAGR of 64.5% up to 2030. That's a 30x increase. And that is a tremendous opportunity for us as investors if we invest in the right companies that will benefit from this humanoid AI robot revolution. So which companies can we bet on that could win this race and this battle? So of course you have got, first of all, Tesla, their Optimus Generation 2 robot. You have got Figure that is backed by Microsoft and NVIDIA. Figure, by the way, is the one that created the Figure 1 robot, which I showed you earlier that passed the Apple to the man who was conversing with the robot. You've got Boston Dynamics that has been in the game for many, many years, creating all their you know, robots that can do backflips, that can you know, fight with a person, that can um, hold a weapon. And you've got Amazon, which is the biggest user of industrial robots. They are now backing this company called Agility Robotics that created this humanoid robot called Digit that can literally replace an Amazon worker. And they've already replaced 100,000 workers so far with a lot more to go. I think the industry, just like electric vehicles today, will eventually become very, very competitive. But at the same time, I think there'll be winners in different areas. So for example, in the home robotics, you never know, the winner could be Apple, could be Tesla, could be Figure. And in the military government space, it could be Boston Dynamics. In the industrial space, it could be Amazon's Agility Robotics. But at the end of the day, I think that the biggest winner may be the company that doesn't actually make the robots, that makes the chassis, that makes the body. But the ultimate winner could be the company or companies that make the computers and the software that powers the robots. And right now, while Tesla, Qualcomm, Intel, AMD, they do make embedded chips for robots and for autonomous driving, I think the company that's way ahead of the game is NVIDIA. NVIDIA recently unveiled Jetson Thor, which is their cutting edge computing platform, which is way ahead of all the competition in terms of speed and energy efficiency. Jetson Thor is designed for complex tasks and seamless interaction with humans and machines. And more importantly, not just the chips that go into the computers that run the robots, but more importantly, robot AI training. And NVIDIA has developed the ecosystem that allows robots to learn through large language models plus large action models. So that means you can actually program the robot by talking to the robot like you do with the um, ChatGPT or Google Gemini Bard, but also large action models where the robot learns from you through observation and through imitation. NVIDIA's latest project Groot, the robots are now able to comprehend natural language and mimic human actions through observation. So this advancement enables them to learn very quickly, coordination, dexterity, various skills necessary for navigating, adapting, and interacting with the real world. So personally to me, I think that NVIDIA is where I'm gonna place my biggest bet uh, to benefit from this AI humanoid revolution. I also have got investments in Amazon, I've got investments in Microsoft, I've got investments in Apple as well. So far, I'm not invested in Tesla and I'm also not invested in Boston Dynamics. And you can't because Boston Dynamics is a private company that you can't buy, but it is owned by Hyundai Moto Company, which is a Korean listed company, you can see over here. This is the ticker symbol HYMTF, which is the Hyundai Motor Company that owns Boston Dynamics. Uh, but the company itself, I'm not that excited about it because I don't think that it has got a very strong economic moat and 
the auto industry again is very, very competitive. And I wouldn't buy Hyundai just because it owns Boston Dynamics. Now, for investors who do not want to bet on individual companies, you could simply buy an ETF that tracks the entire robotics industry. Now, if you do a Google search, there are many, many AI and robotics ETFs. There are many of them. You can go Google search and check it out. Uh, one of the ETFs I found that is very close to being a pure robotics ETF would be BOTZ. So BOTZ, as you can see, there it is. It grew 56%. Uh, in the last five years. This is the Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. Again, there are many other AI ETFs, but this is more of a pure robotics ETF. Uh, so one of the things that you may want to look at if you decide on investing in this ETF uh, is to take a look at what are the companies that this ETF holds. And they hold quite a number of companies and um, you can click on their full holdings, but these are their biggest holdings right now. They've got Nvidia, They've got Intuitive Surgical, they've got uh, ABB Limited, they've got SMC, uh, Kayans, Yakasawa, and some of them I've never heard of before, right? Dynatrace, you know, UPATH. So what's interesting about this ETF is that they don't just focus on US listed robotics companies, but it's kind of like a global diversified play on robotics. And you can see that in terms of country exposure, 44% of the stocks they own are US listed with 34% uh, from Japan, 10% from Switzerland and the rest from various other countries. And the current price to earnings ratio of this ETF is uh, 35 times earnings. Uh, there is no projected growth rate, so we can't really calculate a PEC ratio on this. So yeah, this is something that you could check out as well. Now, before you get too excited and start to buy all these stocks, do note that the market is now technically a bit overextended. We are kind of like due for pullback or correction sometime this year. And so we may get more attractive prices down the road in the short term. At the same time, if you look at many of the stocks that I mentioned, uh, most of them are currently overvalued. So uh, do uh, be cautious about that. So for example, on this table, you can see I've listed most of the companies that we talked about, except Boston Dynamics, which is a private company, we've got Nvidia, we've got Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and the ETF I mentioned, BOTZ. So most investors may just look at a PE ratio, and from there they may say, okay, Nvidia is the most expensive, sorry, yeah, Nvidia is the most expensive, 75 times earnings, that's crazy. Um, and then second most expensive would be Amazon at 65 times earnings, and Tesla, and so on and so forth. But if you have watched my previous videos, you know that you know, P-E ratio itself uh, may not be the most accurate measure of valuation because P-E ratio doesn't take into account the growth of the earnings. So a company that has a high P-E could be cheap if the earnings are high. And the company with a low P-E could be expensive if there's no growth in the earnings. So you can't look at P-E alone, right? But that's what a lot of people look at. Now, this PE is based on the last 12 months of earnings. If you divide the current share price by the next year's projected earnings, you get a forward PE that may give you a slightly better measure of valuation based on the projected growth one year ahead. So based on forward PE, a Tesla looks the most expensive based on forward PE, followed by Amazon, followed by Nvidia, followed by Microsoft and Apple looks the cheapest based on forward PE, all right? And so what's the projected growth of these companies? So this growth rate that I'm showing you is taken from FinChat as well as Capital IQ. These are subscription platforms that you can subscribe to and check out the projected growth rate. So uh, Nvidia's projected to grow at 35%. In the next five years, Tesla projected grow at 10%. Uh, Microsoft 14.9%, Apple 10.22%, Amazon at 23.27%. So another way to value a stock very roughly is to take the P-E ratio and divide it by the growth rate to get the PEC ratio. So the whole idea is the lower the PEC ratio, the cheaper. The higher the PEC ratio, the more expensive. So based on PEC ratio, most expensive would be Tesla and followed by uh, Apple, second most expensive, followed by Microsoft, followed by Amazon, and the cheapest, the cheapest is Nvidia. Interesting, right? Based on pack ratio. Um, 
but I've also given you my intrinsic value that I calculated based on discounted cash flow because sometimes you know PE ratio and PEC ratio is based on earnings and earnings are based on an accounting net income so I rather use free cash flow so if you take a look at using a more uh, a free cash flow discounted model then again you get a slightly different valuation so based on that you can see my intrinsic value for Nvidia uh, 709, Tesla 131, Microsoft 392, Apple 168, and Amazon 182. And if you compare it to yesterday's closing price, right, as I'm making this video, the market's down a bit, so it could get, in fact, a slightly lower price right now. But based on yesterday's closing price, you can see that Nvidia is selling at a 27% premium, selling above the intrinsic value at a premium, Tesla selling at a premium as well, 20, 25%. Microsoft, slight premium, Apple, slight premium, Amazon, slight premium, and of course for BOTZ, all we have is the PE ratio. So to, this just give you some idea of the valuations, but of course, uh, before you decide to buy, do your own research and make sure that you are properly diversified. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for more, do subscribe to the channel and may the markets be with you. If you wanna catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.